A recent study on intermittent fasting claimed that those who ate within 8 hours a day had a 91% higher risk of dying to heart disease. A lot of people have also asked me what do I think of this study. So I decided to make a video about it. So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. First, the study isn't even out yet. The findings were prematurely presented at the American Heart Association session as a poster. The study isn't peer-reviewed and it's not published in any scientific journal. Second, it's an epidemiological study based from the US NHANES data from the years 2003 to 2018. So it obviously has a lot of limitations in terms of causality between innovative fasting or eating within an 8 hour window and increased risk of heart disease. And they didn't even actually measure the people's eating window directly. The participants completed two phone based interviews less than two weeks apart about what time they ate the previous day. You just take two days of the week within two weeks and then you ask when did you eat yesterday? Now that could be a completely random, like there might be some other variables that affect the person's eating window. The eating frequency and how long the person eats obviously changes quite a lot within five or six years. But regardless, what did they find? The study included 20,000 people from the US. The analysis found that those who ate within an eight hour window had a 91% higher risk of dying to heart disease than those who ate over a 12 to 16 hour time frame. Now that is quite a big risk, 91%, and it is concerning for people who are doing get up the fasting, including me. However, there are some major limitations with this data. When you look at the groups, you can see that there are only 440 people who ate within eight hours, whereas there's 11,831 people eating within 12 to 16 hours. Those 414 people make up only 2% of the total sample of 20,000 people. Yet 85 out of those 414 people died. So 20% of the people in that group died. I think that's a pretty big limitation in this study because you have 414 people in one group and 12,000 people in the other group. The people in the 8-hour eating window were also less educated, have lower incomes, less access to food and more likely to smoke. From the data you can see that 27% of the 414 people smoked whereas only 16.9% of the 12,000 people in the 12 to 16 hour eating window smoked. So the people in this study who had an 8 hour eating window, they're not your healthy user bias. <laughs> they're actually kind of the unhealthy user bias because they're not people who are doing intermittent fasting, including all the other healthy lifestyle habits like exercise, eating a good diet, getting enough sleep, etc. These people have the unhealthy user bias, as I would like to call, that they're more likely to follow other unhealthy lifestyles. And the reason why they ate in a smaller time window had nothing to do with the fact that they chose to do it. They probably didn't practice intermittent fasting because they think it's a healthy thing to do. They ate in an eight-hour window because they might have had some health problems. You know, they smoked. They might have had some other issues related to access to food and income that prevented them from eating more frequently. Now, the groups did have a similar percentage of self-reported health conditions such as heart disease and cancer, which ranged from 7 to 11%. However, that's based on self-reported data. And given the fact that the people who ate in a smaller window also had lower income and less education, then they were probably just unable to get access to medical examinations that would diagnose them with their health problems. As a disclaimer, this is me just speculating right now, like the people who had a smaller eating window, they had you know, lower rates of self-reported heart disease and cancer, but they probably didn't know they had heart disease or cancer because they were lower income and they weren't able to get access to doctors who would tell them you have heart disease or cancer. So the key word here is self-reported health problems. <laughs> These people self-reported themselves of having heart disease or cancer, but they didn't actually know if they did have it. The authors of the study did say they controlled for these confounding variables such as age, sex, race, total energy intake, education, income, food security, etc. However, as we just discussed, all the confounding variables were based on self-reported data collected over two phone calls within two weeks. Besides the epidemiological aspect of collecting self-reported data, there's also the problem of imbalances between the amount of people in these different groups. It's also just one single study, which, you know, never is conclusive. So we also have to look at some other studies. So what do the other studies say about eating in a smaller time window? A 2020 study on 2000 cardiac catheterization patients followed up for over five years, found that those who deliberately practiced intermittent fasting had a 46% higher survival rate than those who didn't do fasting. This study was also done on self-reported data, so you have to take it with a grain of salt. But the key word here is that they deliberately practiced intermittent fasting. 
So these people actually chose to do innovative fasting. So it might be that they chose to do innovative fasting for the proposed health benefits. So these people might suffer from a health user bias. But the people who did innovative fasting deliberately had actually lower rates of death. There are also many randomized controlled trials where people are properly randomized and other factors are better controlled for. In a 2023 meta-analysis of clinical studies, innovative fasting combined with exercise resulted in a greater reduction in cardiometabolic risk factors such as body weight, LDL and systemic systolic blood pressure compared to a controlled diet plus exercise. Innovative fasting isn't superior to regular calorie restriction as shown by many randomized controlled trials where the calorie intake is equated for. However, in free living people who don't count calories, Intermittent fasting tends to result in lower calorie intake and because of that greater weight loss. Intermittent fasting doesn't lead to greater muscle loss either as long as you do resistance training and eat enough protein. A brand new 2024 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials on obese middle-aged and elderly people without metabolic disease found that intermittent fasting reduced body weight, body fat and triglycerides more than a regular diet without causing muscle loss. So overall, this study that claimed that eating in an 8-hour window increases your risk of dying to heart disease by 91% is something that you don't really have to worry about that much. And there are plenty of other randomized controlled trials that aren't epidemiological studies showing that innovative fasting has health benefits. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.